Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey, how are you? Fine. I called you yesterday, sir, to bring you up to date on what we've been doing and tell you we're sort of at the end of our rope. Yeah. If you had any other suggestions or bright ideas. No, but I was Bill Moore. You just came in, Morrison. I'll see if he's got any. Bill, you got any ideas what we can do on the discharge petition we haven't done? been carrying a box showing the names of those who have signed in there. I'd take a lot of news, Pat, wouldn't it? He says there's a good many from states that ought to have signed that haven't. Right. That if people like uh, Ruther and uh, the uh, NAACP and the ADAs and groups of that kind that are liberal in their districts could see them, they could get folks to contact them. Uh, for instance, there's three or four in Massachusetts, Larry O'Brien says, have not signed. They don't want to sign on the theory that McCormick is the head of the establishment and that this is an insult to the establishment. But if the, the Jewish groups and the Negro groups and the liberal groups and the ADA groups and the Democratic groups uh, in their area could know it or that they might be brought around. Uh, they say Larry thought he could get to, he could get them. Now we've called everyone in our state and just put the heat on terribly. We can't get the most liberal congressman. Give you a sample. You might get Alan Barth to call him Jack Brooks. He's the most liberal we have. He will not sign. He has breakfast every morning with McCormick, and he feels like it's kind of an insult to McCormick. It's overriding McCormick. It's kind of like you're. Uh, signing a petition demanding that uh, K. Graham force Newsweek to do something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the way they feel about it. And, but, yeah. President, we ran into, or I ran into, checking around the sort of a feeling that you've got a, uh, a chairman's club revolt on your hands. Uh, they're resentful, and each chairman says, I'll never vote to discharge a bill from another committee. They'll do it to me. They've always had that position. They, they've always been against the yeah. petition right uh, because they want to protect themselves. In addition to that, Speaker and the Majority Leader, and I, when I was Majority Leader, I had the same view, uh, never wanted to uh, have a bill taken away from them because it, that's their power. And uh, there's so many times that they have to get a chairman to hold a bill that they don't want, we'll say back in the McCarthy days or uh, things of that type when, uh, when they, the emotions were high and they wanted to get something through a committee uh, you have to say now, listen, uh, everybody would get on the spot and they don't want to vote for the communists and and uh, kind of like Martin Dyes is old on American Activities Committee and stuff like that. You can't bring this out because if I have to vote on it, I'll have to vote for un American Activities and I don't want to. Yeah. So, I ran into one thing and I don't even can't explain it, but maybe you can. That's uh, sort of a feeling that if the uh, heat were off for a little bit, the leadership would come around. Doesn't make any sense to me, but I wonder. That may be, it may be. Uh, uh, I have never uh, uh, put personal heat on any of the three. In the meeting the other morning in my office, I said, now, let's just look at this this way, Mr. Speaker, and Albert, and Hogs. I said, uh, these people feel rather hopeless and uh, uh, six times, six different Congresses over the years, they have, by overwhelming votes, passed this bill in the Senate. The House is supposed to be the body that's closest to the people. Uh, the House would pass the bill two or three to one if they had a vote on it. You've got an agreement here with Ford and Smith and McMillan that keeps this thing bottled up. Before I was leader of the Senate, my good friend Dick Russell and Bob Taft and bottled everything up that they wanted to, and they had for years, and we finally broke through on it. Now, we've got to break this thing. If we don't, these people have nothing to look forward to, and they just feel like that uh, the fellow in Mississippi has got a better chance to vote because we've got a federal registrar than they've got a chance to vote because the congressman can't even vote on it in the committee. McMillan won't let them. Now, we ought to break that because if we don't, frustrations develop. Speaker agreed with me.
Albert agreed with me. And I had rather thought when they walked out that they would immediately sign it. When they got out in the press, the UP, who for some reason or another always uh, develops the mean angles, said to them, well, does this mean that the leadership is going to sign a petition uh, that would, in effect, destroy the leadership? Uh, the president, Mr. Who said that? The UP. Oh, the UP. UP, yeah. they ask a good many questions. It makes me always wonder if Roy Howard's asking them. I mean, the old days, Roy Howard's not here anymore, but they ask him a real twisting one, and they do it a good deal. Yeah. Uh, does this mean that you're signing a petition to wreck yourself? McCormick said no, he favored the home rule. But he sidestepped the signing of the petition. And uh, I have never communicated with him since. I had gone pretty strong in that meeting. Um, I don't think it necessarily follows well, that that, uh, that uh, we're defeated if we don't get it this Tuesday. I think we just got to keep on. And now there are three from the state of Connecticut. There are a few from New York. Uh, what I think we ought to do is get Joe Rowe to come in and, and uh, tell your people, the folks from uh, the states that ought to sign. You're not likely to get anybody in Louisiana or no. this area. Progress. Do you know whether they made any progress with McCormick yesterday or not? Zero. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. But when they talked to him, they got nowhere. No, none. What did he tell them? Uh, he stuck on tradition. The speaker never does this. And he was mad that we put uh, Albert on the spot. He wasn't mad at her block cartoon, but he was mad that we singled out Albert and said you'd have to, to sign it. And, uh, but, uh, hell, I think he, uh, Hale Box, I know, and Albert would, would, would vote for home rule. What did he say about Albert? Wait, well, uh, this was an accusation of the Washington Post. That, uh, what do you mean by putting uh, Albert on the spot like that, with the monkey on his back, or words to that effect? But he wasn't angry at anything we'd written about him or even the cartoon. And mm -hmm. uh, we got a very soft soap editorial this morning, a real good one which is uh, in no way cranky or uh, acerbic, and it really is an appeal to McCormick, and it can't, uh, can't annoy him in any way. Now, this is sort of on the basis where we, maybe we get it with honey instead of with vinegar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's good. I think we just have to continue to try to do everything that we can. I think it's important for them to understand that Ford tries to twist this thing. It is not anything that I say that within itself is confined to home rule. Uh, we have had committees for years that have been frustrating the Negro and frustrating the, the those at the bottom of the economic level by bottling up uh, poll taxes, by bottling up voters' rights, by bottling up elementary school bills, by bottling up medical care. Just year after year after year they meet and if a Macmillan won't let a bill out, or Cooley won't let a bill out, or Smith won't let a bill out, uh, Eastland won't let a bill out, and these these uh, these people see it and say, well, maybe we don't have the votes, but if we could get a vote, uh, we'd be satisfied. And uh, I took the position when I came to the Senate, that the uh, position of leadership in 52, and I would insist that we have a chance to vote. And the policy committee never held up one bill, I, I, as contrasted with the rules committee that frequently held them up. And they had, we just changed their practice. We didn't hold them up at all. We might hold them up a week to give a member a chance to have further evidence presented. 
but never hold up a bell. Now, the other day, I tried to point that out, and I tried to point out, to, I didn't go into detail, I never mentioned the word home rule. Ford took it and twisted it and said, I threatened riots in the district if home rule. I didn't say anything like that. I said that the people who year after year saw their bills bottled up in committee after committee, and if one committee didn't handle them, another committee would. And uh, that doesn't apply just to the one subject. It applies to a good many subjects. And then I went ahead, and it had been applying to this particular subject, this public works bill. The ARA had been held up week after week, month after month, year after year, by Howard Smith's committee. We couldn't get it last year on account of the committee. I didn't specify that because I didn't want to call Smith's name and didn't want to get the personality. But the UP immediately turned it. Right. And in their lead, they said, the president today said that there'd be riots unless home rule were reported. And then they had to backtrack. And, uh, but that lead went all over the country. It was in a good many newspapers. It's on all the tickers. Yeah. And I didn't say that at all. We pointed out to them we didn't say that. Uh, we could say it about school aid this year, elementary school. It's been bottled up for years, the church-state thing. Couldn't get out. So I say if a Negro living in Los Angeles or living in Johnson City or living in New York or Boston or any other place, if year after year he sees all the subjects he's interested in and all the things he hopes will give him some opportunity, uh, locked up with, for a dozen men, won't let him be voted on, he wonders what kind of democracy this is. So I say we've got to at least uh, give them a fair shake. Now, uh, this little bill that they were signing was ARA, and it had been bottled up, and it affected the small town. Now, I pointed all that. I think that a fairness, uh, somebody ought to take the speech I made on rioting, and where I told them that this is no way to take the law in their own hands, and this speech I made on ARA and public works and applying to all the bills, and show the whole thing in context was no threat on home rule. It had nothing to do with it per se exclusively, although it does qualify as one of, I'd say, 25 measures. Medicare, education, beautification. I've got beautification held up, both committees now, bottled up by the billboard people. And uh, uh, unless you expose it, unless you threaten them, if you, if you expose it, then they resent it. On my own hook, I undertook to say what, uh, what how you felt about this, what your views were with that there. Right? Sure, sure, sure. I think that you, I think if somebody would just, the great, uh, the great interpretation that we get uh, from uh, your, uh, your uh, profession and that fine protection of the First Amendment, first, uh, great, great many times is a, is a great disservice to the country. Uh, we have uh, in all these big cities and the small cities of the country. Uh, undercurrent of dissatisfaction and hopelessness and frustration because uh, certain subjects have been taboo through the years. They bottle it up. I don't know. It's birth control if you want to. It's ARA if you want to. It's medical care if you want to. It's public works if you want to. It's elementary school education if you want to. It's civil rights if you want to. It's voting rights. Now, I said that. I said as effectively as I knew how. I didn't mention the word home rule, but home rule comes in the category. Now, when we looked into Los Angeles, we, 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 we had a big study made out there, and it shows that in this Watts district, the highest dropout rate hell in the world is there. We show that the highest density rate is there. We show that the, the highest disease rate and the highest uh, 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 youth unemployment, and we show that the the biggest narcotic racket. Now, all of these things are not just accidental; they go together. And the reason uh, they exist is one: we've been unable to get a public housing bill through some of these rules committees. We've been unable to take care of our young people. We have uh, uh, been uh, unable to uh, have a proper juvenile delinquency program. And as a consequence, that's where it erupts. Now, I'm meeting it out there with Ramsey Clark. Got a long report today. He hopes for next week that he'll have something on the way. But what I was trying to say is we're gonna have all these problems of density, of juvenile delinquency, of uh, all these other things uh, uh, to solve in the Watts District. 
plus all the damage that's been done and clearing out the debris and building new buildings. So therefore, before we had a repetition of this, we ought to get at these basic problems, health, education, narcotics, youth employment, etc. Now, you, home rule happens to come within that.